Hello friends! Today, we're going to make a cat sweater. Our cat Peekaboo is going to be getting spayed next week, and I wanted to make her a little sweater that she can wear so that she doesn't have to wear a cone after her spay appointment. My plan is to have a tummy section that is a more dense stitch, and then like a back shoulder section that's like an open stitch, something that won't make her too hot, and then we'll have a drawstring at the back so she still has room to use the litter box, but her scar area will be covered and then there will be a little ribbed collar because we have to make her look cute also so this is what I'm hoping it's gonna look like on her and I think this is how we're gonna build it up first let's talk about what you're gonna need to make this project you're going to need a crochet hook I'm using a six millimeter hook today you'll also need some scissors and we might need some stitch markers but if you don't have a stitch marker a short piece of yarn will do just fine and of course you're going to need some yarn I'm going to do peekaboo's sweater in pink and and white today. I think that will look lovely on her gray fur. I think that's about a number three weight yarn. And by the way, I'm using cotton for this one. So gather your supplies and let's do it. We're going to start this project like we do every project with a slip knot. From here, chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, one and two, complete a single crochet, and then single crochet in every stitch across. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. Here I am at the end of that row. I will chain one and turn, and now we've got a short little row here of single crochets. You should have five single crochets. The first chain makes up a single crochet, two, three, four, and five. For the next row, we're gonna start with a regular single crochet into the first stitch, just like that. And then for every stitch in the row remaining, the last four stitches, we're going to single crochet but just in the back loops. So there's one, two, three, and four. And now I'm gonna chain one and turn. And now for row number three, I'm going to start that row with a single crochet in the back loops only. This is actually a good time to put in our first stitch marker. We did a single crochet back loops only on this side, but if you remember, we started this row with a regular single crochet. I'm gonna mark this side so that I know whenever I am finishing a row coming to this side, I wanna finish with a regular single crochet. We're gonna keep one side straight with regular single crochets. So for row number three, we're going to just do single crochet back loops only until we get to the end of the row. Here I am. There's only five stitches in the row, so it doesn't take very long. And now at the end of the row, I'm gonna do a single crochet normally in that last stitch and then chain one, and turn. You can already kind of see what I mean. It's got a straight line on the single crochet regular side, but on the side where we did it in the back loops only, it is way more defined as that rib, do you see? You'll see a little bit more as we keep going. So for row number four, I'm going to start with a single crochet normally in the first stitch, and then back loops only for the remaining four stitches of the row. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. Now for row number five, I'm going to start with a single crochet back loops only. I'm gonna single crochet back loops only for the first four stitches. And then for that last stitch of the row, I'm gonna single crochet normally. And from here, it's actually a repeat of just those same two rows. We're gonna single crochet normally in the first stitch of the row and then single crochet back loops only all the way across. And then in the following row, single crochet back loops only for the first four stitches and single crochet normally through the last stitch of the row. We're just gonna repeat that back and forth, back and forth until the rectangle measures long enough to get around your kitty's neck. 
here I am at the end of my rectangle. For peekaboo, the rectangle measures about nine inches. Peekaboo's got a pretty thick neck and she's a big girl, so I don't want her to have anything tugging on her. I wanna make it as comfy as possible. So that is about nine inches. I'm gonna trim my yarn here because we're gonna start on another section now. Before we do that though, I'll show you the single crochet side where we single crocheted through both loops. You see how nice and flat that is? And then look at how ruffled the back loops only side is. So this will be the side facing out and it's got that nice ruffly ripple, but the single crochet side is much more smooth. Kind of a cool thing. Sorry, last thing, this is 35 rows. <laughs> I didn't mention that yet. 35 rows to make the collar. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the cream colored yarn at a corner and then I'm going to single crochet along the edge until about the halfway mark, just a little bit past the halfway mark. And then I'm going to be working one side as the, the top and then one side as the bottom. This'll be like where the tummy portion goes. So my plan is to treat this first rectangle as its own thing and basically single crochet across to here and then start an increase like that, just ignoring these stitches and starting by single crocheting to here, increase and then increase up and up and up to make it into this shape. Does that make sense? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my stitch markers and I'm gonna mark my, well, I don't need to mark my first stitch. I guess I'll just mark where I want to stop single crocheting. And like I said, I think it's gonna be more than halfway. So I think I'll mark it about here. So right about the 20 row mark, now we're gonna be working on this area. I'm gonna start here by inserting my hook into that first stitch right where the initial slip knot was. And then I'm going to pull up a loop of the new cream color. And then I'm going to just draw everything nice and tight. And then I'm gonna chain one. And now I'm going to single crochet in the first row here. And I'm crocheting over the tails. So I won't have any ends to weave in after. Anyway, I'm going to single crochet across this row all the way to that stitch marker we placed a minute ago. And here I am coming up to the end of that first single crochet row. I'm gonna put a single crochet in that last stitch that has the stitch marker in it. And then from here, I'm going to chain two and turn. One, two. For row number two, I'm going to begin with a double crochet into the first stitch of the row. And then I'm going to double crochet across. At the end of this row, chain two and turn. And here I am just coming up to the end of row number two. I'm gonna put my last double crochet into that last stitch. And then I'm going to chain two and turn. One and two. For row number three, we're going to begin with two double crochets into the first stitch of the row. There's one. And there's two. Then I'm going to chain two, one and two. I'm gonna skip two, one and two. And then I'm gonna double crochet into the next stitch. Then we're gonna double crochet into the next stitch. Then chain two. Then skip two, one, two. And then double crochet into the next two stitches and then chain two, one and two, and then skip two, one and two, and then double crochet into the next two stitches. And we're gonna repeat this all the way across, and I'll show you how that looks towards the end of the row. All right, so if you did the same number of stitches as me, you should end up like this at the end of your row. So two double crochets, then we're gonna skip two, and then you'll be at the last stitch of the row at that point. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put two double crochets into this last stitch. And that's gonna create a bit of an increase for us while also maintaining the two double crochets between the chain two spaces, just like that and then chain two and turn. For row number four, we're gonna begin with two double crochets into the first stitch. One and two. Then we're going to double crochet across, but I'm going to put two double crochets into those chain two spaces. So there's one, there's two, and then I'll put two double crochets into the double crochet stitches and then two double crochets into the chain two space. 
At the end of the row in the last stitch, place two double crochets there. All right, so here I am at the end of row number four. I'm going to finish with two double crochets in the last stitch, but I also wanna switch colors at this point. So I'm gonna trim my yarn, and then I'm gonna do the first part of the double crochet with the old yarn, and before I go through the last two loops on the hook, I'm going to transition into the new yarn color. I'm going to pull through that last bit with the new pink yarn, and then I'll just draw it tight. Now I'm gonna chain two and turn. For row number five, we're gonna do what we did for row number three. We're gonna start with two double crochets into that first stitch, followed by a chain two, one and two. Then we're gonna skip two stitches, one and two. And then we're gonna double crochet into the next two stitches. There's one and there's two. Now I'm gonna chain two again, one and two. Then we're gonna skip two, one and two. Then we're gonna double crochet into the next two stitches. I'm gonna repeat that all the way across, skipping two, then doing two double crochets, skipping two, then doing two double crochets, until I get to the last stitch of the row. In the last stitch, we're going to do two double crochets in that last stitch. Here I am at that last stitch. There's my first double crochet there and the second one. And from here, we're gonna chain two, one, two, and turn. Oh, isn't that cute? All right, so for this next row, we're going to do another increase. So we're gonna do two double crochets to start, two double crochets in that first stitch. And for the rest of row number six, we're just going to double crochet across. So put one double crochet in each double crochet stitch and two double crochets in each chain two space. But at the last stitch of the row, we're going to do two double crochets in that last stitch. I'll meet you there. Here I am at the end of row number six. I'm just going to put two double crochets in that last stitch of the row, and then I'll chain two and turn. For row number seven, we're going to continue in the pink yarn, and we're going to do two double crochets in the first stitch of the row. Then we're going to chain two, skip two, one and two, and then double crochet into the next two stitches. One and two. Then we're gonna chain two, skip two, one and two, and then double crochet into the next two stitches. We're gonna repeat that all the way across with two double crochets going into the last stitch. Here I am at the end of row number seven. I'm gonna put two double crochets in the last stitch of the row. And then for row number eight, it's going to be a double crochet across row. So we're gonna start with a chain two. We're going to do two double crochets in the first stitch and the last stitch of the row. So there's one and there's two. Otherwise, we're just going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of the row, again, two double crochets in the last stitch of the row, and I'll meet you there. Here I am at the end of row number seven. I think we should switch back into the white yarn again. So I'm just gonna finish out my row here with double crochets. And now I'm at the last stitch of the row. So I'll do my first double crochet in pink, and then I'll start my double crochet. So I'll do my yarn over with the pink insert the hook, yarn over again with the pink, pull up a loop, now we've got three loops on the hook, yarn over again with the pink, pull through two of the loops, then I'll drop the pink and I'll pick up that creamy color and I will complete the stitch with the cream color. From here, you can drop your tails and just chain two with the new color. One and Two. At this point, I think we have enough increases. This is just supposed to make it over her shoulders, and then we want it to basically continue increasing until it gets behind her front leg, and I think we're about that point here. So since we're done with the increases, we don't have to put two stitches in that first stitch. We can just do one double crochet in that first stitch. And now for rows number eight and nine, we're on row number eight right now, but for row number eight and nine, we're just gonna double crochet a Across. I'm gonna cover the tails of yarn with my double crochets. So I'm going to zoom through this part because it's just double crochets, but I will see you at the end of row number nine. 
And here I am at the end of row number nine. I'm going to put one double crochet in the last stitch, but I'm gonna switch my yarn color back to the pink at this point. So I am going to start my double crochet with the white yarn, and then I'm gonna finish the double crochet with the pink yarn. And I'm actually gonna try not cutting the tail on this go. I'm gonna try to just leave it and see if we can just swap back in and if that'll be easier than crocheting over the ends. So I'm going to finish that row with a chain two two and turn. For row number 10, I am going to just double crochet across. I am going to double crochet over my tail for the pink yarn, but I'm going to double crochet one stitch in each stitch across. So I'm going to zoom through this part and then I will meet you at the end of row number 10. So this sweater is starting to give me major Enid vibes, which is hilarious because peekaboo is like such a Wednesday, but I think it would be funny to kind of continue with that vibe. So I'm going to do a few few more rows just in double crochet in the pink and then I've got something in mind. So that was row number 10. I'm just going to do 11 and 12. So I'll do two more rows of double crochet and then we're going to do some color work to make some fun shapes like in the TV show Wednesday how some of the crochet has some really cool shapes working into it. So let's do that next. Okay I've got it. So for this next part I am going to do, I'm figuring it out as I go along so just just bear with me here, but I'm going to bring up the cream colored yarn and I'm going to start the next row with that colored yarn. So I'm gonna do my chain two with that yarn, chain one, chain two. So I counted this row and there are 32 stitches in it. 32 is divisible by four. So what my plan is, is to change yarn colors every four stitches here. So I'm starting with the cream color. I'm going to do the first four double crochets. There's one, there's two, three, and on that fourth stitch, I'll get the first part of the double crochet done with the cream yarn, and then I'll switch back to the pink yarn to complete the stitch. So then the stitch color change happens at the perfect spot. And now I'm gonna do four double crochets in the pink. One, two, three, and four. And on that fourth stitch, we're gonna switch back into the cream color at the top of that stitch. And then we'll do four in the cream. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way across this row back and forth between the two colors to make for a really cool checked design. So I will see you at the end of the row and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, so we are just coming up on the end of row number 13. I'm going to finish the row with a double crochet. I'm gonna chain two and turn. Oh, look how cute this is gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, okay, for row number 14, we're going to actually follow the exact same repeat. So we're gonna double crochet in the first four stitches here with the pink and on the last stitch on that fourth stitch. I'm going to end the double crochet with the cream colored yarn. Start the double crochet with the pink, finish it with the cream, and then I'm gonna double crochet into the next four stitches, the cream color stitches, with the cream yarn. And I'm gonna finish the last stitch with the pink yarn, and so on and so forth, all the way across row number 14. And when we get to the end of row number 14, we're gonna be doing something different. So meet me back there and I will show you what we're gonna do next. So here I am coming up to the end of row number 14. I'm just gonna put my last four double crochets here in with the cream color. But on that last stitch, again, we're going to finish it with the pink. So I'm gonna do the beginning of my double crochet with the cream, first two parts, and then we'll finish it with the pink and then chain two with the pink and turn. Now we're gonna start this next row, row number 15. We're gonna start with the pink this time and then we're gonna switch to the cream. So I'll do my first double crochet in the first four stitches with the pink, but on the fourth stitch, we'll switch into the cream. And the fourth stitch here, so I'll do the first part of the double crochet in the pink, and then we'll swap it to the cream. And then I'll do the next four stitches in the cream, swap back to the pink, and I'll do pink, cream, pink, cream again for row number 15. And at the end of 15, we'll chain two and turn, and then row 16 is gonna be the same as row 15. You're gonna line up the cream with the cream and the pink with the pink. So I'm gonna zoom through the rest of row number 15 and row number 16, and I'll meet you back here at the end of row number 16. 
I'm coming up to the end of row number 16 now. I'm gonna finish my last double crochet with the cream color now, swapping to cream, and then I'll chain two with the cream. And you can see how cute these little checkers are now. For row 17 and 18, I'm gonna repeat it one more time so that I have three chunks of this sort of checkerboard pattern. All right, I'm just at the end of row number 18 now, and look at how cute that looks. I think I'm now going to do another row of just the pink, or two rows rather, in the double crochets of just the pink. So I'm gonna finish off row 18 with a double crochet in the cream, but I'm gonna finish the stitch with the pink yarn. I'm gonna cut my cream yarn at this point because I'm done with it for a little while. For row 19, I'm gonna begin with a chain of two and turn, and I'm going to double crochet over my cream tail here so I don't have to weave in any ends after. And for rows number 19 and 20, I'm going to do one double crochet in each stitch across for those two rows. And I am going to zoom through rows 19 and 20 because I'm just doing double crochets in the pink. I will see you when I get back to the end of row number 19. So here I am at the end of row number 19. I am going to just put my last double crochet in here with the pink and I am going to change colors now. I'm gonna break the yarn off and I'm going to finish that double crochet with the cream yarn and chain two and turn. And now for rows number 20 and 21, I am going to double crochet across with the cream yarn. All right, here I am at the end of row number 21. We're gonna switch back into the pink at this point. For row number 22, I'm gonna begin with a chain of two. So I'm gonna start row number 22 with a double crochet two together. I've got my chain two here, and then I'm gonna yarn over, insert the hook and pull up a loop, insert the hook and pull up a loop from the next stitch, then yarn over, pulling through three of the loops, then yarn over, pulling through the two remaining loops. That is how I do double crochet two together. Now I'm going to double crochet across, but for the last stitch, we're gonna double crochet two together again. So I'll meet you there. Here I am at the end of row number 23. I'm at my last two stitches, so I'm going to do a double crochet two together again. And at the end of that row, I'm gonna chain two and turn. For row number 24, we're gonna start by putting a double crochet into the first stitch. Then we're gonna chain two, one and two. Then we're gonna skip two, one, two. Then we're gonna double crochet into the next two stitches. One and two. Now we're gonna chain two again, one, two, skip two again, one, two, and then double crochet into the next two stitches. And I'm gonna repeat that across. I'll meet you at the end of the row to show you how I'm gonna finish this row up. And here I am at the end of the row. I'll do a chain two. And then in the last stitch of the row, instead of doing a double crochet into two stitches, we're gonna do two double crochets into that corner stitch. From here, we're gonna chain two and turn. Now for row 25, we're going to do the same thing we did for row number 23. So we're gonna start by double crocheting two stitches together. We're gonna double crochet the first two stitches together, and otherwise, we're gonna double crochet across. I'm gonna put two double crochets in each one of those chain two spaces, and then I'll put a double crochet into each of those double crochet stitches. And I'm just gonna repeat that, double crocheting all the way across, and I'll meet you at the end to show you how I'm going to double crochet two together for the last two stitches. So I'm at the last two stitches of the row here. I'm gonna double crochet two together for these last two stitches. And then I'm going to finish the row, chain two and turn. Now for row number 26, I'm gonna begin by double crocheting the first two stitches together. So I'm gonna do a double crochet two together for the first two stitches. Then I'm gonna double crochet across, but I'm going to double crochet two together for the last two stitches. And I am going to do that repeat of decreasing at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row for the next four rows. So row number 26, 27, 28, and 29 are all going to have this decrease at the first and last stitches of the row, otherwise double crochet across. 
All right, here I am coming up to the end of row number 29. And this is our last row with decreases on it for the top portion. I'm gonna finish with a double crochet two together there. And then I'm gonna chain two and turn. And for row number 30, we're just gonna double crochet across. No increases, no decreases, no nothing. At the end of this row, you can cut your yarn and weave in your end because it's time to get started on the tummy. So I'm gonna zoom through this row. We'll talk about what we've got so far and then we'll move on to the second portion. And here's what we have so far. So we've got the nice gappy part around her chest. So she'll have lots of air flow there. And then we've got these cute pink and cream checks, which I think came out beautifully. A couple of stripes after that, a few more gappy bits. And then we did a few rows of decreasing. If I fold it in half, you can kind of get an idea for what this sweater is gonna look like when it's on peekaboo. This will be on her back. And now we have to work the area that's gonna cover her tummy. To do that, we are going to be reattaching back at the beginning of this project. So I'm gonna take that stitch marker out from before and we are gonna pull up a loop on the following row. So not the same row that the stitch marker is in, but the one right after that will pull up a loop with that cream colored yarn. And then I'm gonna chain two, one and two. I'm gonna pull that chain really tight though. So it's not gonna take up the amount of space that a double crochet does. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just push that chain over a little bit and I'm going to do a single crochet in that same space. So I'm just gonna not count that chain two as a stitch and we'll just be counting the single crochet as a stitch. So I did a single crochet in there. I'm gonna single crochet to the end of the work. And at the end of this row, I'm going to chain two and turn. And now for row number two, I'm just just going to double crochet across back to that first stitch and then we're actually going to do from row number two all the way to row number 10 we're just going to double crochet across we're not going to do any increases or anything we're going to do 10 full rows of double crochet so i'm going to zoom through that part because it's just double crochets so row two all the way up to 10 i'll see you when we get to the end of row number 10. here i am at the end of row number 10 i'm just going to put my last double crochet in and now I'm gonna show you what it's doing. So this is gonna be the back and this is gonna be where her chest area is. Now that we've made it to row number 10, we are going to connect the two corners here and here to the sides here, but we need to do an increase before we actually do that connection. So at this point, I've just stitch markered the collar part together so that you can kind of understand where we're at. If I fold the sweater over the way it's gonna look, you can see there's gonna be space for her front legs to come out and this will be under her chest and now we're going to be working the tummy so this whole area we need to do this in a more dense stitch because we want it to be protected so she doesn't lick it we're going to be working a rectangle but first we need to increase the size because my little peekaboo has quite the tummy so we need to increase the number of stitches at this point before we get started in a more secure looking stitch we are going to do two rows with increases. We're gonna do rows 11 and 12 with increased stitches for the first stitch and last stitch of the row. I'm gonna do these increases in the cream and then we will work up the next section in the pink. So I'm gonna start my row with a chain of two and for row numbers 11 and 12, I'm going to do two double crochets in the first stitch and two double crochets in the last stitch Otherwise, double crochet across normally. At the end of the row, chain two and turn. I'm gonna zoom through this because it's just double crochet across again, except for the increases at the beginning and end of the row, but I will see you at the end of row number 12. So here I am at the end of row number 12, put my double crochets, oops, I forgot, we're gonna change colors. We're gonna change to the pink now. So I'm going to double crochet, but I'm gonna finish the double crochet with the new color of yarn. I'm going to just cut my yarn here and I'm gonna switch in to the pink. And now I am going to just chain one and turn. So I'm on row number 13 now. It's going to be a row of single crochets. We're gonna just do, so one single crochet in each stitch across, nothing special, nothing fancy. At the end of the row, chain one and turn. From row number 13 all the way to row number 23, so we're gonna do 10 rows. We're gonna just do single crochet in each stitch across. 
At the end of the row, chain one and turn. I'm gonna do this whole section in pink just so it's a nice dense stitch in a dense color, but I'm gonna do the next 10 rows in single crochet. So I will meet you back here when we get to the end of those 10 rows. All right, so I just tried this on Miss Peekaboo and I think we are on the right track. However, 10 rows is not nearly enough here. I thought 10 rows, I was mathing it out the same as double crochet, but of course it's not. So this is nine rows. I'm just gonna do the 10th row here, but I'm gonna do a total of 30. So I'm gonna do 30 rows in the single crochet, which should bring us to about here. And then it's gonna be time to connect everything so that it's actually uh, gonna cover up her scar mark and I will show you how we're gonna do that. But I'm gonna rush through the single crochet rows just cause it's a lot of the same. No increases, no nothing, just back and forth. I've got 20 rows left, so I'll see you then. All right, I've just finished my 30th row of this pink area and that is going to be the area that covers the scar from Peekaboo Spay. So now it's time to start assembling this thing. Before we actually get into the assembly though, we have to do a round of double crochet all the way around all the raw edges. And I'm gonna do that in pink just because I'm already here connected to that pink. So, you know what, let's do a couple of measurements. The rectangle at this point, the pink rectangle, measures about six inches by about five and a half inches. And then the net portion of the chest is about seven inches by about five inches. The collar is about nine inches and the entire length of the back portion of the sweater, 17 inches. So about 17 inches long. These two corners here and here, these are gonna connect and that's gonna be where her tail is able to come out. And then from here will be where her legs come out. So let's do the crochet part first before we do the assembly. I just wanna do a whole border in the pink so that the stitching where we stitch it together is not going to be visible. So I'm going to begin right at this corner here. I'm gonna start with a chain of two, one and two. And now I'm going to put a double crochet into that first stitch, but down the rows. So instead of moving across the row, we're basically turning 90 degrees. So I'm gonna put a double crochet into that same stitch. And then I'm gonna just put one double crochet down each row until we meet that white net portion of the project. We're gonna keep double crocheting down those ones as well. So I'm going to put one double crochet everywhere that I can all the way around the project. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's just double crocheting around all of the open edges. It's just to even out the entire project so that it all sort of fits together in the end. Okay, so I was just about to start. I got to the end of the one side and now I need to go down this front side again. But in order to do that, I have to sew the collar together at this point. So I am just going to use the original tail from the collar and I'm gonna insert the hook into the first stitch on both pieces of fabric on the collar. And then I am going to single crochet that seam together. So I'm gonna insert the hook into the next stitch and then single crochet both pieces together. And I'm just gonna single crochet all of them together. There's only five, so it's not gonna take long here, but it is going to make the next part of my crochet a little easier for me. I'm gonna continue my double crochets. I'm going to connect at this point. So I'm gonna do a double crochet two together for these two stitches. So I've got a double crochet here. I'm gonna double crochet two together for these two stitches. One and two, and then finish a double crochet. And now I'm going to start double crocheting up the other piece of fabric. And I'm just gonna go back to where I began this round. And I'm playing yarn chicken pretty seriously. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna make it all the way around. Now it's gonna be time to actually get this thing put together. So I'm not going to double crochet along this last row here. I'm just gonna make it all the way to the corner so that I went around the entire thing except for that bottom portion. And look at the amount of yarn I have left. Perfect game of yarn chicken. And here I am at the end of the row. I'm going to do a double crochet 
in that last stitch, and then I'm going to pull my yarn through, and I'm gonna weave in that end. And now let's check out what we're working with. So at this point, the cat sweater is made up of a front and a back, or a top and a bottom. You can see this side. This is gonna be where her tummy is, and then that'll be the back. So now we have to attach everything together so that it actually stays on like a little sweater. And for us to do that, we have to mark out the places where it's gonna connect. So I'm going to count 10 rows in our front chest area, and I'm going to put a stitch marker there, and I'm gonna put a stitch marker on the 10th stitch on the other side. And now we're gonna match those pieces to the 10th row on the back shoulder, which is right here. So I'm going to match up the stitches and connect them together so that I can visualize it a little bit better, what we're gonna have to do to connect everything. Her front leg holes are right here and here. And then these sides are gonna be connected up until about, probably about there. So I think at about the 14 row mark, I'm going to put my stitch marker there and then I'll grab another one for the other side. And then we know that these two corners are going to match up. So I'm going to put a stitch marker through the corner stitch on both pieces here. And this is going to be, the only thing we have left to decide on is where we're going to connect for the back leg. It doesn't need a huge amount of space. The top is a little longer than the bottom, but that's all right. And then these spaces will all be stitched together. All right, there. Does that make sense? So we've got front legs here, back leg here, bum and tail here. I think we'll add a little drawstring just so it tightens it up a little bit when it's on her. But I'm gonna go try this on uh, and I will let you know if it actually works uh, and then we'll put it together. <laughs> oh my goodness, Pika, you're okay. All right, so this is quite a look, isn't it? Here's Miss Peekaboo helping us, oops, test drive it. So you can see her whole under tummy is going to be covered. She's going to have back leg room, no problem. Front leg room, no problem. A nice little chest and a nice little collar. I know you hate it. I'm so sorry. So we're going to start at the arms. We're going to connect right here. Then we will connect all the way down to here. And I think I'm going to do that with I think a single crochet. We'll single crochet it together. So this is supposed to be the outside. So if I'm gonna crochet the seams closed, I should do that inside out so that the seam doesn't show. So I'm going to take my hook and my tiny amount of yarn that is left, pray for me, and I am going to connect where that first stitch marker is connected. And I'm gonna do that just by inserting through both pieces of fabric pulling up a loop and then I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna single crochet into the same space that I just did that chain one out of. And now I'm going to single crochet across until I get to the stitch marker that is representing where I want to stop to make an opening for her leg. All right, I made it to that stitch marker where I want to stop. So I'm going to stop with my single crochets here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to slip stitch along this bottom piece of fabric until I am two stitches stitches from the end of the fabric. Just one layer of fabric for this part. So I'm just about at that point of the back of the sweater. So I'm slip stitching my way over to that corner. And now I'm gonna be single crocheting the last stitch. So I've got my hook in the last stitch of the row here, and I'm going to insert my hook into the corner stitch of the other piece of fabric, and I'm going to single crochet those two together. And now I'm going to put another single crochet into the same space. So I'm going to insert my hook into the same space on the front piece of fabric. But on the back piece of fabric, I'm gonna insert into the next stitch and I'm gonna do a single crochet. Now I'm going to slip stitch again all the way across, but this time I'm gonna slip stitch on the back piece of fabric to get across. So I'll just slip stitch across this back piece of fabric until I reach the corner, and I will meet you back here to reattach at the corner. So I made it to the stitch before the, here's the corner stitch, and I've made it to the stitch before the stitch before the corner stitch. So I am going to insert my hook now into the corner stitch of the front piece, and then I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch before the corner 
stitch on the back piece and I'm just going to do a single crochet there. Then I'm going to put my hook into the same spot on the front piece and then on the back piece I'll insert it into the corner stitch at this point. So it goes through two different stitches on the back side but we do the same space on the front side. Now I'm going to be doing the slip stitches across to where we want the leg to connect again. So now I'm doing this again on the bottom side. I'm just going to slip stitch across until I reach that stitch marker. I made it to that stitch marker so I'm going to insert into the stitch with the stitch marker and then I'm gonna insert into the piece of fabric behind it through the stitch that the stitch marker was going through, and I'm gonna complete a single crochet. And now I am going to single crochet both pieces of fabric together here until we meet that first stitch marker. So we're gonna pass a couple of stitch markers on the way, but we're gonna keep going until we reach that first stitch marker. And there we go, I've made it to that last stitch. I'm gonna put my single crochet into the last stitch there. And would you believe this? This is my whole yarn tail from, it was one whole ball of yarn. So I can say this takes almost a whole ball of yarn. Now I'm going to trim my yarn there, yarn over and pull through. And now we're gonna turn this inside out and see how it looks. All right, this is looking awesome. So we've got spaces for her back legs and for her front legs, ample room for her to move around, but we've got a nice dense stitch in the area where she's going to have stitches. Her tail is going to be all out that end and then her head will be over here. So I think that's it. Let me weave in the ends and then let's just get to the after shots, people. What do you think? How do you like this project? Do you think you're gonna try it for yourself? Do you think your cat would wear it for their spay? If you have anyone in your life who needs to have their small dog or cat neutered or spayed, let them know about this. This tutorial. It's a good way to not have to give your cat the cone of shame, I think. And we're gonna be using this when Pika gets her spay next week, so wish us luck. Hopefully all goes smooth and she doesn't mind wearing the sweater for a couple of weeks. I think she looks absolutely darling in it and I hope that you like it too. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And hey, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I work hard on these things and it lets me know what you think about it when you let me know what you think about it. And also, I wanna just give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You guys rock. Thank you so much for supporting me. Here is the list of patrons supporting me this month. If you wanna join my Patreon and get early access to my videos as well as private access to our Discord, check the links in the description. I'm gonna link the Patreon down there and then you'll be able to get all that information. Like I said, friends, that is all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye.